Mr. Speaker, I rise to express my deep sadness and concern about the people who were badly affected by the tragedy which occurred on 6 November 2022, where hundreds of persons were affected due to the flooding. We need to thank the Lord because he spared the lives of those who were badly impacted. The government is committed to assisting the victims as best as we can. I need to commend my colleague parliamentary representative for Grozile for his lion's approach in dealing with this flooding nightmare. I know he sincerely cares for his constituents. To the people in the Babono constituency, especially the farmers who lost an entire investment on their farms, I understand your plights, pains, and frustrations. So please do not give up. Let us support each other and start all over again. The government will try to assist to help you to get back on your feet. Mr. Speaker, my minister's statement today is to give you a brief update on the situation at the Borderley Correctional Facility and the efforts of the Home Affairs Department in combating crime in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, this government has a plan and a strategy to combat crime in St. Lucia. The plan is designed more at prevention by engaging in building the human resource capacity of its people and creating opportunities to involve the citizens in productive activities. Mr. Speaker, while many persons focus on the number of murders and other criminal activities they hear on the media, especially social media, I'm here to present a balanced view of what this government has been doing to combat crime and to keep all the St. Lucian citizens safe and to reduce criminal activities in this country. I want to take this opportunity to express my condolences to the families of the nurse who met her demise as a result of a criminal activity. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to report that as of November 4th, 2022, a new director for the Borderley Correctional Facility was appointed in the person of Mr. Vungard. He had served at that institution before, and this is an indication that he is more than ready and prepared for the task at hand. Since his appointment, the director has already reported on the immediate actions he has taken to start the restructuring of the institution to make it more effective and efficient. Mr. Speaker, the director has conducted many meetings with persons working at all levels in the institution, including the inmates. Mr. Speaker, the Borderley Correctional Facility has to be transformed into a real reform or correction facility, where the focus will be on rehabilitation using intelligence-driven and skills development to reduce the level of recidivism, which is over 40%. That is, the number of persons who are released from prison, about 40% comes back into the prison. We have to reduce that. And with rehabilitation, we need to get these people back into the society so that they continue to be productive citizens. Mr. Speaker, at present, the institution has a population of 522 inmates with 505 males and 17 females. 184 males are penal and 322 are on remand. 
females, there are 14 females who are penal and three on remand. There are 199 staff members operating at the institution. Mr. Speaker, in recent times, within a, about two weeks ago, we were able to collect contrabands and confiscated cannabis, chargers for phones, cell phones, batteries, cigarettes, and weapons at Borderly Correctional Facility. It is not easy to keep these inmates under control. So I commend the officers for the work that they do in the institution in order to ensure there is discipline, there is law, and there is order. Mr. Speaker, you will recall that I reported to this honorable house and inform you, Mr. Speaker, that the government had commissioned a review of the Borderly Correctional Facility. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to report that this report has been submitted to the Cabinet of Ministers over two months ago. The findings of the report was discussed with the management at Borderly Correctional Facility. It was also discussed with the new director who assumed the position recently. So we have a very clear path on how we approach the challenges at Borderly Correctional Facility. Mr. Speaker, the report has some interesting recommendations which calls for stronger leadership, improvement in communication, repairs to the infrastructure of the institution, need for greater security, more rehabilitation programs for inmates and corrective measures. Mr. Speaker, there is the need for greater collaboration with other support services to strengthen the capacity for rehabilitation program to make Borderly Correctional Facility a truly correctional facility. We need to reduce the percentage, as I mentioned, of the number of persons who continue to return. Mr. Speaker, I will repeat it again. Because a few years ago, before this government came in office, the last government did not allocate money in the budget for training of officers in the protective services. Mr. Speaker, I can assure you that this government is committed to develop a very effective and efficient public service and therefore has allocated over hundreds of thousands of dollars to recommence training for police, correctional officers at Borderly Correctional Facility, the fire service, the marine unit, and the probation and, and parole unit. So far, Mr. Speaker, the training has started among police officers, correctional officers, marine unit officers, fire service officers, and probation and parole officers. Mr. Speaker, this government, under the strong and visionary leadership of Honorable Prime Minister, who has started putting the available resources in the right places. There is a very profound statement which I would like to quote, Mr. Speaker. No one is safe until everyone is safe. We have to commend our law officers who are employed in the protective services for the sacrifices they are making on a daily basis, both night and day, to keep all of us safe. Mr. Speaker, this is a country where we need to do all that is possible to keep all of us safe and secure. Some people can laugh, but no one is safe until everyone is safe. And this nurse who, in the line of going ahead and doing her daily chores, met her demise. Who would have believed that this is what would have happened? And we cannot take this as a light matter. 
It is a very serious matter. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate Kusinta Descat Pelius on her appointment as the new Commissioner for Police in an acting capacity. I want to commend Honorable Prime Minister for having the vision in appointing a woman as Police Commissioner. This happened to be the first time a woman has ever been appointed to the position in St. Lucia as co Commissioner. <laughs> thereby making history. Mr. Speaker, you will not imagine what I saw on national television after the appointment of the first female commissioner of police. HTS conducted an e-poll and there was 100% endorsement of the prime minister's decision and selection of the commissioner. Mr. Speaker, on a side. No wonder the Prime Minister's party at his annual general meeting, he received 100% support from the delegates who voted for his endorsement. Well, well there are some who can hold the, the convention or AGM yet, so we don't know what the outcome will be. <laughs> We see greater support where the government has invested in vehicles to help the police move around. There are plans to build a brand new police divisional headquarters in Grosile and the major repairs for the divisional headquarters in Fewfort. Training for police, training for officers, where over 40 new officers were recruited in the fire service. Monies are being spent to improve communications and security at the Border Lake Correctional Facility. Training for the Marine Unit. New office space was acquired for the Probation and Parole Unit. Ongoing repairs in mostly all the police stations and fire stations. Isn't that a government who cares? The Marine Unit will also be getting its attention with regards to repair and improvement to electrical installation at the facility. Mr. Speaker, we are currently experiencing changes at the top leadership in the police force. The Borderley Correctional Facility, the Fire Service, the Marine Unit, and very soon there will be a change at the Probation and Parole Unit. We, are, we call this the changing of the guard, and we expect to build stronger leadership in the corrective and protective services so that we can combat the issue of crime, law enforcement, and greater discipline in our society. Mr. Speaker, this government is more than ready to bring about the necessary changes to make St. Lucia a safer and better environment for all of us to live and to become very productive in our society. Mr. Speaker, this government under the leadership of a group of competent men and women, I make no apologies for that, is on the right path to complete recovery from COVID-19, you know what did, that did to our country. We had disasters, some call it Alan, some call it economic, there are disasters in all areas. So we have to recover from that. We need to raise the hope of St. Lucian people, all of them, by putting our people first and invest in their future, especially the youth and the elderly. Mr. Speaker, as we are about to observe the 16th day of activism, starting from November 25th to December 10th, which is the time the whole world is calling for an end to violence against women. And what are we witnessing today? The demise of a woman. We have too much violence in this country. We need to manage our anger and learn to love and care for each other. We need to share 
and show concern for our neighbors, friends, co-workers, and try to live in harmony with each other. We need to show concern for the less fortunate and share the little that we have among each other. Mr. Speaker, we have to help those who became victims of the recent flooding in the north of the island. The Gender Affairs Department, which is another department under my watch, has secured about 1,000 dignity kits to distribute among the flood victims as a form of support to them. Mr. Speaker, with the help of the Almighty God and the support of the people all over the island and those at the regional and international levels, we will grow from strength to strength in a peaceful, safe, and secure environment to live and work together as productive citizens. Mr. Speaker, I have said to you that we are here to live in peace. Nous n'y pour, les nous n'y a t des agréments, nous n'y pour venir ensemble pour nous ranger ça. C'est pas servi gonne, coutla, pour tuer yon a l'autre qui a aboli problème nous n'y a pays simplici. Et donc actuellement, nous qu'a travaillé sur ces polices-là, nous qu'a travaillé sur ces gens bordelais, nous qu'a travaillé sur ces gens faire ce service-là. C'est mon seul là pour protéger nous. Et le gouvernement ça là qui mette l'argent pour aider des situations, pour nous voir que ces gens là ni un déclin au brisier, pour que ça fait travailler bien. Et moi quand même tout cet lycée pour supporter ces gens là qui a travaillé pour protéger nous. Parce que la panique, personne ne peut casser les sols si nous tous passons les sols. We have to make everybody safe for us to be safe. There is no safe place to hide except making everybody safe. So those of us who are here in this honorable house, those of us who are listening out there, we have a responsibility to ensure that we secure our country, our Helen of the West, the most beautiful island in the West Indies. We are winning awards and awards, and we cannot make her unsafe for our citizens and our visitors. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for listening.